Yo guys, I've got a spark which I'm going to use to ignite the fire for a brand new Skarda's video here in the channel. Seven months ago, I made a video ranking all of the Skarda's elements, but the ranking was based solely on math. So today, I'm returning to that idea, but I'm doing it solely with the battle classes and Skarda's imaginators to determine which battle class has the best senses within it. This time, I won't be using all of the data from my video ranking all 167 unique Skarners, I'll just be using the data for the Sensei rankings within that video. This means we'll have 31 total characters in our calculations across 11 different battle classes. If I were to use the entire list, these numbers wouldn't be fair, as slots between each Sensei vary drastically, significantly impacting the average score of each battle class. For example, Kingpin and Ember would rank very close, but the next Sensei ranks much lower on the list, which would significantly change the average of the battle class compared to Brawler and Sentinel respectively. As we're solely looking at battle classes and Senseis this time, this is the only data we need, so it's the only data we'll use, it's simple as that really. We won't just be looking at the average placement of each battle class within the rankings of the senseis though, we'll also be calculating for medium and range, as these two calculations help eliminate anomalies from the battle classes which are considered the weak links, because we're looking at middle placements of each battle class which could be significantly better than the bottom placement, and we're looking at how consistent in quality each battle class is amongst the senseis within it since the range measures how many placements the entire battle class covers. Without further ado, let's roll that brand new intro and get straight into it. We'll cover each battle class in order of the Doomlander boss fights through the base game, meaning we'll start with Sorcerer, which is one of the few battle classes with four senseis inside of it. From worst to best, Mr. Cat scored 25, Golden Queen scored 24, Dr. Neo Cortex scored 21, and the best of the four, known as Pit Boss, scored 18. For the average, we add all these numbers together and divide it by the number of numbers in the sum. The medium is the number in the middle when the numbers are put in ascending order. Because there are two numbers in the middle when an even number of numbers is used, we simply use the number halfway between the two middle numbers. The range is simply the smallest number taken away from the biggest number. These calculations result in the average being 88 divided by 4 and the range being 25 minus 18. The final numbers are 22 for the average, 22.5 for the median, and 7 for the range. The next battle class is Brawler, another battle class with four Sensei representatives. This battle class also features the weakest Sensei in the entire ranking with Crash Bandicoot who has a score of 31, then there's Kingpin who gets a score of 23, Grave Clover gets a score of 12, and Airstrike gets a score of 10. The average calculation is 76 divided by 4 and the range is 31 minus 10, resulting in 19 for the average, 17.5 for the median and 21 for the range. Next up is Bazooka which is one of a few battle classes with only two Sensei representatives. Chompy Mage scores 7 and Flare Wolf is my favourite Sensei so he scores a measly 1. The average calculation this time would be 8 divided by 2, and the range would be 7 minus 1, resulting in an average of 4, median of 4, and a range of 6. Swashbucklers are next, with a traditional amount of 3 senseis representing the battle class. Aurora earns a score of 29, Bad Juju gets a score of 27, and Chain Reaction gets a score of 11. The average calculation this time would be 67 divided by 3, and the range would be 29 minus 11, resulting in an average of 22.3, a median of 27, and a range of 18. Next up is Knights, which also have the traditional amount of free senseis. For weakest knight, known as Ambush, scores 14, Blastertron scores 6, and Wildstorm gets the low score of 3. The average calculation is 23 divided by 3, and the range is 14 minus 3, resulting in an average of 7.67, a median of 6, and a range of 11. 
Next up is Ninja, also represented by three senseis. Starcast scores 30, Boom Bloom scores 22, and Tycoon Crow scores 5. For average calculation, is therefore 57 divided by 3, and for range, is 30 minus 5, resulting in an average of 19, a medium of 22, and a range of 25. Next up is for Smasher Battle Class, Chopscotch scored 26 on the ranking, whilst Tri-Tip scored 17 and Peñata scored 9. This results in an average calculation of 52 divided by 3, and a range of 29 minus 9, resulting in an average of 17.3, a medium of 17 and a range of 15. Next up is for Bowslinger of Battle Class, also with 3 Sensei representatives, Bookshot scores 28, Wolfgang scores 8 and... Robo scores 4. The average calculation is 40 divided by 3 and the range is 28 minus 4, resulting in an average of 13.3, a medium of 7 and a range of 24. Next up is for Quick Shot Battle Class, where we jump back to only two Sensei representatives, those being Dr. Crankcase with a score of 16 and Tidepool with a score of 2 if she's my second favourite Sensei. This results in an average calculation of 18 divided by 2 and a range of 16 minus 2, resulting in an average of 9 and a median of 9 and a range of 14. Second to last is Sentinel, with three Sensei representatives once again. Hudsicle scored 20, Ember scored 19, and Barbella scored 13. Therefore, the average calculation would be 52 divided by 3, and the range would be 20 minus 13, resulting in an average of 17.3, a medium of 19, and a range of 7. The final battle class is an odd one. It's for Chaos Battle Class, which obviously only has one character representing it. Because Chaos scored 15 on the ranking amongst only the senseis, it means the outcome of every calculation is 15. This data is based on a much smaller data pool than all the other battle classes, so it's not entirely fair because no doubt with more senseis being part of this battle class, the calculations would be impacted significantly. It's the same for Quick Shots and Bazookas, they did very well because they only had two characters and they nailed it, but Bowslingers would have been the same if Bookshot didn't exist to bring down the average of the entire battle class because Wolfgang and Robo alone would have resulted in some very good scores. It's impossible to say how good a third member of the Bazooka and Quick Shot Battle Class would have been, they could have significantly increased or decreased the average of those respective battle classes. That analysis out of the way, let's officially rank these battle classes based on the average, median, and range of each one. For average, the ranking from worst to best is as follows, Swashbuckler in 11th with a score of 22.3, Sorcerer in 10th with a score of 22, Brawler and Ninja tied in 9th with a score of 19, Smasher and Sentinel tied in 7th with a score of 17.3, Chaos in 5th with a score of 15, Bowslinger in 4th with a score of 13.3, Quickshot in 3rd with a score of 9, Knight in 2nd with a score of 7.67, and Bazooka in 1st with a score of 4. For medium, the ranking from worst to best is as follows, Swashbuckler in 11th with a score of 27, Sorcerer in 10th with a score of 22.5, Ninja in 9th with a score of 22, Sentinel in 8th with a score of 19, Brawler in 7th with a score of 17.5, Smasher in 6th with a score of 17, Chaos in 5th with a score of 15, Quickshot in 4th with a score of 9, Bowslinger in 3rd with a score of 8, Knight in 2nd with a score of 6, and Bazooka in 1st with a score of 4. You can tell how much of an anomaly the lowest scorers of each battle class are, based on how far away the lowest scorer is from the medium, or vice versa, how much better the rest of the ranking characters in their respective battle classes are, based on how much better the lowest scorer is compared to the medium. In either case, Bookshot showcases this way how he's the weak link, causing the entire average of the Bowslinger class to falter, since his score is much higher than the median. And Chain Reactional Robo, meanwhile, showcases the opposite, since they're the main reasons that Swashbucklers and Ninjas didn't score as poorly as they could have, because their scores are well below the mediums of their respective battle classes. For range, for ranking from worst to best is as follows, Ninja in 11th with a score of 25, Bowslinger in 10th with a score of 24, Brawler in 9th with a score of 21, Swashbuckler in 8th with a score of 18, Smasher in Chaos tied in 7th with a score of 15, 
Quick Shot in 5th with a score of 14, Knight in 4th with a score of 11, Sorcerer and Sentinel tied in 3rd with a score of 7, and to no one's surprise, Bazooka wins yet again with a score of 6. So I'm editing this in post and realising that I made a mistake with the range of the Chaos Battle class, because there's only one piece of data, then there technically is no range for the Chaos Battle class, so let's go ahead and quickly correct this charter, and from this point forward just remember that Chaos does not have a range. This showcases that even with an additional member to the Bazooka class is likely based on this consistency that Bazooka would still be taken home for trophy today as the battle class with the best senseis. Say what you wish about how terrible sorcerers are, they are at least consistent, and knights are consistently low, which is why they still come home with two silver medals and a fourth place. I'm going to end off this video with one final piece of analysis. Wherever the medium is very close to the average score, it showcases just how fair that average score truly is, because it reached very close to the same as the middle ground, and an average calculates the exact middle ground because of how it takes into account all data of the Sensei's rankings within a particular battle class, and it also proves that the data set had a more symmetrical distribution, so each sample of data within the set is more consistent with each other, and it strips out more anomalous results. This also means average scores higher than the median are scores where the entire battle class is let down by a single underperforming Sensei compared to the others, the example here being Bookshot, and an average score lower than the median Median, means that there is one sensei significantly better than the others within the battle class and they're the only ones working to improve the average score of that battle class significantly once again the examples here being Tycoon Crow and Chain Reaction as they're well below the median and the expected position of the battle class is based on where the majority of the characters in that battle class lie which is exactly what the medium spot represents. Most medians were within a couple of points from the average score unlike the 167 unique scanners ranking because each element within that ranking has a large pool of data to draw upon within an even bigger sample size. Here the pools of data are much smaller and they're taken from a much smaller sample size to begin with so the numbers are more consistent and reliable except for Swashbuckle and Ninja and Bowslinger if they have the largest disparity between their median and average scores as well as the highest in range because they are the battle classes with the most annoying anomalies within them, Tycoon Crow and Chain Reaction being much better than the other two representatives of their battle class, and Bookshot being much worse than the other two representatives of his battle class. This final analysis has emphasised how these three characters were the biggest game changers for the outcome of these results. If these characters didn't exist, or if they were more consistent with the rest of their battle classes, then this data would have been very different. The medium score for each battle class would have been closer to their battle class average, and they would have scored much closer closer to the middle of the ranking in each case. But now with my repetition for effect having played its purpose, it's time to roll that outro without further ado. I cannot in good conscience end of this video without first thanking all of my incredible channel members whose continued support helped make these videos possible. Without them, these videos would be near impossible to make, so from the bottom of my heart, I truly appreciate every last one of them. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, there are plenty of options on screen now to explore, and please consider subscribing to keep up to date with all my content. On that note, this video is coming to an end, so thank you so much as always for watching. Until the next video arises, peace!